Good evening. Can you hear me? On behalf of the Brockton, on behalf of the Brockton Area Branch National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, we would like to welcome all of you to the second mayoral debate. My name is Phyllis Ellis. I am the president of the Brockton Branch. I'm also the moderator for this evening's event. At this time, I would like to thank the Brockton Community Assets for letting us, for taping this event this evening. And a big thank you to Reverend Creighton for letting us host at this historic Lincoln Congregational Church. And at this time, I would ask Reverend Creighton to come to give the invocation. Reverend Creighton. Fool around. So, uh, Do you have more than eight questions? No. Why? Eight times seven is, uh, is 48. We've got to take into care this consideration his opening, my opening, and my asking the questions. Why? You want it more than that? We may not take a lot of time. Mm. Uh, city prospers. Not to hurt. 
The time is now to choose love and not hate. The time is now, Lord, that we will come about and look to bring about a change. The time is now to choose unity over division. The time is now to stand together. Slave ship, middle passage, immigrant ship, Ellis Island, the Queen Mary, we all are in the same boat today. We have a common enemy, and united we stand, and divided we fall. Lord, you said in your word, a city divided against itself will not stand. A house divided will soon fall. We invite you in tonight to moderate our undertaking. We invite you in tonight to endorse us. For whatever you endorse, it's got to be blessed. You said in your word that you stand at the door of God. If any man will come in, would open the door, that you would come in and stop with him. All these things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let those here say amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Reverend Creed. I would ask at this time that you silence all your telephones, please. Thank you very much. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is the nation's oldest, largest, and most widely recognized civil rights organization. It was founded in 1909. Its vision is to ensure a society in which all individuals have equal rights without crimination based on race. The Brockton area branch of the National Association for the Advancement of People, Colored People, was founded, chartered in 1954. And we also share that vision, but with emphasis on education, housing, social justice, and economic development. The questions tonight will focus on our vision. The questions were submitted by three officers and one member of our Brockton branch. Leona Martin, Vice President, Patricia Monteith, Treasurer, <laughs> and Russell Larkin, Member. The candidates nor any one of their, I'm messing up, the candidates nor any member of their campaign have seen the questions. Right now, we're going to introduce the candidates. To my right, I have the challenger, Mr. Jimmy Pereira. Hi. And the mayor of Brockton, Mr. William Carpenter. format for this evening's debate has been approved by both candidates. The format is as follows. I will ask the candidate a question. The candidate will have three minutes to respond to that question. The opponent would have two minutes to rebut. And then the first candidate will have one minute for a follow-up. This will follow until all the questions are answered. So, are you gentlemen ready? Yes, madam. I'm going to toss an imaginary coin up in the air and see who goes first. Mr. Carpenter, you're up. All right. <laughs> the crime rate in Brockton is higher than the national average and is on several lists as one of the 100 most dangerous places to live in the country. Although Brockton's violent rates have dropped a bit since 2013 FBI report, the crime rate is higher than 95% of the state's cities and towns of all sizes with 10 violent crimes per 1,000 residents. What strategies do you feel we should use as a large suburban city to decrease the crime so people feel safe about the city we live in? Well, <clears throat> is, is Mike working? Mike's. You got to turn it on. Is, test, test. There we go. All right, we're ready now. Crime is the single biggest challenge facing the city. It has been for a long time, along with the perception of crime, which impacts the perception of the city. I can talk a little bit about what's happened since January of 2014, since our administration came in. 
all, every single category of crime other than auto theft is down since we became mayor. Violent crime is down 26% since January of 2014, and gun-related crime is down 21% since January of 2014. We have made tremendous progress in making this city a safer place. Brockton today is cleaner, safer, and more prosperous than it was when I became mayor almost four years ago. I can't take the credit for all of that. We have a lot of good people working for the city but we have implemented strategies to reduce crime. We have targeted guns and drugs. Guns and drugs, you can't separate them nowadays. And we have identified repeat violent offenders. The majority of violent crime is committed by a very small percentage of the people that are here in the city. And by identifying them and targeting, identifying targets of mutual interest, we have widely, um, we have widely, uh, we've increased our commitment dramatically to collaboration with county, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. And by sharing intelligence and sharing resources, we're able to identify these targets of mutual interest, run joint investigations, and take them down. The year before I became mayor, 2013, there was 34 drug raids in the city. Last year, there was 69. We have doubled the amount of drug raids that we're conducting on an annual basis. We're going after drug dealers while we're continuing to offer help and assistance to those suffering from addiction. We're coming at this drug problem from both sides. When you look at the causes of violence, you cannot separate the drug problem from the violence problem but we're getting guns off the street. Since January of last year, since January of last year, police have taken 240 guns off the streets of this city since January of last year. So we are getting guns off the streets. We are identifying the most dangerous criminals in the city and we're arresting them. Unfortunately, the judges keep putting them back out there, but every time they put them back out there, we arrest them again. Thank you. Two minutes to rebut. Thank you, madam. Well, the truth of the matter is we are, again, third ranked highest uh, violent crime uh, city in the, in, the, in, this, in the state and also uh, 71st in the nation. Uh, problem is, uh, uh, Mr. Carpenter, is you're not engaging the youth. You're not really engaging the people that really need that attention as well. And growing up in the city of Brockton, I have the experience that we need for our youth, the role model that is necessary, the mentorship that is necessary as well, and the connection that we need with the youth. Uh, actually, working with the Department of Youth Services and being a motivational speaker and working with the Commonwealth Corporation, I have the experience as a grant monitor and doing my internship, uh, working with at-risk programs, funding them, and making sure that they are effectively working with the youth. I actually visited the facilities that obtained these uh, young at-risk youth, and I made sure that I walked through the classroom and made sure that they were learning about their worth, and that is called advocacy, self-advocacy, and that's what we need in the city. And again, with the rank of the crime that we are ranked at in the city of Brockton, and it's a shame. Uh, when you walk downtown, it's not pretty. Pleasant Street is not so pleasant. And for you to actually say that, and I recall this from the uh, Metro South Chamber uh, uh, forum that we had, to say that you're working on a, a situation, a solution that's going to help the homeless and relocate to, to Pleasant Street for a day center uh, is actually a band-aid. That's not what we need. We need long-term solution. And a long-term solution that a Pereira administration will focus on is a Housing First initiative. Imagine a complex that services our homelessness, that works on workforce placement, workforce readiness, drastic success, and, and making sure that they work on housing etiquette, health etiquette, and make sure they will work with mental health issues. These are solutions that I've seen in the city of Springfield, that I've seen in other cities, similar to the city of Brockton. We need to apply best practices, and let's get an innovative mayor that's gonna make sure that we follow through with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Collinson, one minute. Well, there's no doubt that the long-term solutions do revolve around working with our youth and helping our youth to make better decisions growing up. That's why I believe the battleground is the middle school ages and we're putting resources towards them. 
But Jimmy, I'm sure you're familiar with many of the programs that are in place. Some started before me, some implemented under my administration. But we have the Safe and Secure Youth Initiative. We have Shannon Grant funds that are being invested. I'm partnering with the Boys and Girls Club on numerous programs, including summer basketball leagues to give youth a safe haven. We have the Safe Corners program, putting street workers out on the street, engaging at-risk youth. So there's no shortage of programs, and even with the younger kids, I've started a playground program for kids ages 7 to 12, so that they have a safe haven during the day, during the summer, when their parents may not be home. So we are making dramatic steps to engage youth, and particularly mentoring and role modeling is important, and teaching young people decision-making skills so that they're able to make better decisions as they're growing up. Thank you. Different departments have been exposed in our city for their weakness in trying to create a balanced, diverse workforce in a city whereby over 47% of our citizens are citizens of color. We have had the Lopez case and other challenging situations. What is the plan to rectify a system that needs powerful reforms against years of racial exclusion and old forms of nepotism? Three minutes. See, there are several examples, se several solutions to this problem and what we have right now is a reactive government. We need to be proactive and what I propose is a citizens advisory committee uh, similar to the diversity commission but this will look at hiring practices and look at uh, repercussions as well. What we need is a process that is transparent, inclusive and innovative as well and the, this citizen advisory committee already exists so looking at cities, sisterly cities that relate to the city of Brockton looking at that process. Well this citizen advisory committee again will look at uh, looking at the uh, repercussions and making sure that they're transparent. We also want to make sure that we look at other solutions to the problem, making sure that we diversify our workforce. We want to make sure that we look at the people and make sure that there are uh, more than just minimum requirements. We want the best requirements. We want to make sure that we are not just looking at, uh, let's say, filling a quota, but making sure that we educate those that are culturally competent as well. We don't also need people of color. We need to make sure that everyone is educated on the culture that comes with the city of Brockton. It's not just Haitians, it's not just Cape Verdeans, it's not just Latinos, it's Italians, it's Puerto Ricans, it's Latinos, and it's different cultures as well. We need to educate each other. We need to embrace each other on that as well. What I don't see at the City Hall is a very diverse community. Yes, we've brought some people in, but we don't have them in effective roles as well. Currently, there's only two uh, head administrators of color in the uh, city in the uh, city hall of Brockton, and we definitely need more of that. We need to make sure that we look at putting people in effective roles that are going to know the community and are aware of the communities that they serve. My own experience coming back to the city of Brockton, looking to join the planning department, I had one year experience working in the city of Springfield as a healthy design coordinator. I've worked at uh, the uh, regional planning agency and worked with different regional planning agencies such as the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I grew up in the city of Brockton speaking multiple languages, yet I did not just, not just get the job, but I didn't get a follow-up asking when I asked for professional feedback. That's one example. The second example, I asked Mr. Carpenter and his administration about joining the planning board. I didn't get that opportunity while sending two letters of intent. I knocked and knocked, I didn't get an answer. Final knock, I asked uh, Mr. Carpenter about sitting down and learning what it means to be a public figure didn't get an answer. So with that said, I made sure that, you know, if it's happening to me, it must be happening to uh, a majority of the community, hence the lawsuit, hence the class action lawsuit, uh, and Mayor Carpenter, as you said, that lawsuit would, uh, re re uh, would deplete the uh, reserve funds. So uh, that's a, a problem that we've consistently seen, not just during the uh, former uh, administration, but the current administration as well. We need change, and the change is now. So on November 7th, please get out and vote. Thank you. I my time. Well, let's get the facts straight. I ran as for mayor four years ago saying I would open up city government to everyone, to all communities in this city, and that's exactly what we have done. And while you may not have been appointed to a board of commission yet, 56% of the people that I've appointed to city boards and commissions So I've chosen to lead by example. I'm the first mayor in the history of this city to appoint a minority majority class of new police officers, and I'm getting ready to appoint a second minority majority class of police officers. I'm the 
first mayor in the history of this city to institute diversity training for department heads. I'm the first mayor in the history of this city that appointed an African-American woman to be a department head. I'm the first mayor... And I'm the first mayor in the history of this city that chose a person of color to serve as my chief of staff. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate your, your endeavors and your, 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 your accomplishments. Of course I do. But uh, I remember on May 2013, you did say you would fill the board, and you successfully did so. Uh, and uh, yes, I wasn't the, uh, the one appointed to the board, but uh, at least with a simple uh, follow-up and appreciation of at least reaching out to a community member that wants to be active, involved in the community, you weren't able to do so. Uh, looking at the police officers that you are filling in, you're replacing retiring officers, which is a true fact. Uh, we need to be uh, more proactive uh, and make sure that we hire more officers and make sure that we follow through when we say we're going to have officers uh, walking on beats. And uh, that hasn't happened yet as well, too. So look at the diversity. We want to make sure that we follow through with what we say and not just wait to post elections. We have a Maureen Cruz that is uh, at a spot that we need to make sure that we look at. Uh, we, not, we need to make sure that there were repercussions for actions such as so. You said that there was a report that's coming out. We haven't seen that. We're not going to wait to post elections to see results. We need results now. Thank you. I will Thank my time you. Now. Thank you. I know you guys are enthusiastic. <laughs> this kind of... Mr. Carpenter. The casino did not happen, but the idea behind it, finding new entities for Brockton development, is still... You guys can hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? Are you sure? Okay. Mr. Carpenter, the casino did not happen, but the idea behind it, finding new entities for Brockton development, is still a viable vision for the city. What is your vision for economic development for Brockton? Well, first of all, Jimmy, you're going to get your facts straight if you're going to run for mayor. 176 police officers when I became mayor, 200 today. We have increased staffing, and I've hired more minority police officers in my three and a half years than were hired in the history of the city before. <laughs> I am a pro-development, pro-business mayor. We have worked hard to expand the tax base in this city. We have created an environment of attraction to bring new companies into the city. That's why this afternoon I was at 121 Liberty Street with the president of Fuji Food Products who just paid $3.45 million to move his business here to Brockton and bring 120 jobs with us. Our economic development policies are working. We are expanding the tax base. The past two years is the single largest two-year period of new growth in the history of this city. We are growing the city. We are expanding the tax base. And our initiatives are working. Thank you. Jimmy, two minutes. Well, sir, from what I've seen, downtown has been slowly progressing, yes, uh, and because of my uh, professional uh, background, uh, I do see uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the advances because I've been involved in, uh, involved in them as well, uh, as you know. Uh, you appointed me to uh, one of the uh, downtown collaborative plans, uh, as you may know. Uh, so with that said, uh, looking at how we are bringing in businesses, light industrial, but why don't we be bring innovative businesses into the city? We were supposed to have a downtown education collaborative, but the city didn't have a plan for that. Well, the state did, and guess what? It's an unemployment assistance building that's at $23 million. We should have invested in a downtown education collaborative. People don't want to lift, hand out, they want to lift up. And that's what we need in the city of Broadway. We need a mayor that's going to be innovative and that's going to fight for the right reasons. Being an innovative mayor means that you're looking at alternative energy, not just power plants and things of the sort. We're in 2017. Let's look at moving forward to 2027 and more so. Uh, looking again at the uh, lack of uh, innovation that you've been bringing to the city, uh, again, looking at the, uh, the, the Fuji uh, business. Of course, we want to welcome more businesses, but we want to bring innovative businesses. We want to have uh, an education collaborative that's going to educate our youth. Uh, and as you know, we have a $16 million deficit. You are once at the uh, school committee. You are head of the school committee. Uh, post, uh, before election season, you barely were at any of the meetings. You weren't proactive, and that shows in your actions, more so reactive than proactive. And uh, that's what I am not. I am a proactive person. I own a home in the city of Brockton. I'm not sure if the mayor does. Uh, I have my education. I have a college degree, bachelor's degree, and uh, 
geography, regional plan, and I also learned minor in ethnic and gender studies. Reason so, so we wouldn't have the problem that we have at City Hall. Uh, discrimination, rampant discrimination. So, sir, I ask you, what are you going to do, City of Brooklyn? Because, again, you're most, more of the work that you're doing off, is off the, uh, the works of others. You're taking credit for things that you haven't done, and we need a mayor that's going to actually bring people to the table and give them the credit that they deserve. I relieve my time, madam. Well, in one minute, I can't touch on the five different things you talked about, none of which answer the question. But the fact of it is I'll tackle alternative energy. You raised that one. This past year, Brockton became a green community, a certified green community, a two-year effort, a comprehensive plan to reduce the city's uh, energy usage by over 20%. We're right now replacing every street light in the city with an LED light. Those lights are paid for almost half by grants and credits. They come with 10-year warranties. They'll pay for themselves in two and a half years. The landfill at Thatcher Street is now a solar field, generating a quarter of a million dollars a year of revenue to the city, generating clean, renewable energy. We've, we've acquired electric vehicles with state grant money costing us almost nothing. So you may not think we're becoming a green community, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has certified us as a green community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pereira, the Brockton Area Branch in ACP has been involved with surfacing the concerns of the lack of teachers of color in our schools, especially in our high school. How do you plan as mayor to work with the appropriate city agency and school administrators to rectify this matter? Great question, Madam. I uh, look forward to not just working with the school committee and the superintendent on the uh, Grow Our Own uh, program that they're looking to initiate, uh, but also looking at uh, higher education as well. Uh, we need to strengthen that. And going to Westville State, a Horace Mann School, uh, a leader in education in the Commonwealth, I know a thing or two about education and looking at the, uh, the strength of having a college degree and furthering that as well, too. I'm looking to uh, pursue my uh, master's degree in public administration and looking to further that uh, as a doctorate as well, too, because that's what our, our our children need. Our children need person, people that are set trending centers, people that are going to look at the future and look at and look at goals. Uh, so, uh, no, no uh, disrespect to your age or whatnot, but you're nearing retirement, and we need someone that's going to look at the long-term effects. I own a home, a 30-year mortgage, and that's something that's going to be about working and looking for the city, and someone that's actually going to look at, at aging in place as well too, and having that educational background that looks at that. And something that we need to do uh, in the city of Brockton is looking at looking at teachers that's going to help the city and live in the city as well. And we need to make sure that we have a leader that's going to look at make, making those initiatives. One initiative that I look at doing is uh, looking at neighboring colleges and giving them more opportunities to work, not just in the school system, but the uh, school administration as well, to get a feel of not just what it means to work at the ground level, but in the uh, administration buildings as well. I think it's important that we have uh, people that are conscious about the community and leadership roles. Uh, that's something that I've been looking to do, and with doors closed on me, making sure that I'm persistent and circumventing and finding different ways to do that. Uh, it's a shame that we have to uh, find hard and, and look at uh, finding ways to get through that. Uh, we should be able to get through the gatekeepers, not wait for them to open the door for us. And we need a, a lady that's going to do so and implement that so in the city of Brockton. Uh, we are a community that's a majority minority community. We want to make sure that we don't forget that uh, the others that have come before us as well, but we want to make sure that we have cultural competency. That's something that we don't see in City Hall. That's not something that we don't see in the administration. We don't see that in the uh, services that's provided in the city as well. Again, we're facing a lawsuit, not just a lawsuit, but a class action lawsuit. Uh, numbers don't lie. Uh, again, being ranked at the, uh, the third highest crime city in the, in the nation, in the, in the, in the Commonwealth, uh, that's a problem. We need to engage our at-risk youth. We need to make sure that we give them opportunities and not just blame the court uh, for, for uh, not making solutions. There's a bill out right now that uh, uh, Mayor uh, Springfield uh, actually advocated for that looks at uh, uh, taking away bail, bail rights for uh, high, high crime risk individuals. Something that you could have advocated for, but you're passing the buck like you constantly do, sir. Uh, so being a mayor, a proactive mayor, is someone that's going to look at what's right for the people, make sure that we put people first, make sure that we're proactive about the things that are right. That's something that I was educated on. My teachers and prof professors taught me about looking at the problem-oriented approach. That means you identify the problem, bring solutions to the table, and make sure that if it does not work, you bring more people to the table, and make sure that you go back to the drawing board and make sure you make the fixes that you need to make. We don't see that in the City Hall. It's, it's improving, Time. Uh, but we need to make more improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Coppinger. <clears throat> 
I can remember back to five minutes ago, I think the question was about diversity in the teaching faculty in the Brockton Public Schools. So I'll try to address that. I share the NAACP's concern regarding the lack of diversity in the teaching faculty in the Brockton Public Schools. While we've made great progress on the city side in our hiring practices, and while other school departments, non-certified personnel have shown progress, the results are lacking when it comes to the faculty. And you're right, we do need to do more. And I'm using my position as mayor to try to motivate the superintendent and bring partners in to do more. Now I'll tell you what I think, what I think our game plan should be and what we are working on. Twofold. One, we need to actively recruit change of career teachers. There are a lot of folks of color here in the area that may be working in other careers that would become great public school teachers and we ought to have a program to be recruiting them and helping them to become a certified teacher. We also have to do a better job of growing our own teachers. We put a thousand great graduates out of Brockton High School every year and I'm in conversations with Bridgewater State University to formulate a game plan where we can help encourage public school teaching as a career, help them financially get through the biggest public school teachers college in the state is 10 miles down the street and get them back here into the city to teach. So we need to grow our own teachers. We need to encourage public school teaching as a career. We do need to be proactive and also recruit change of career teachers to come into the system. Because I do agree with Jimmy that young people coming up through the school system do need role models. And they do need to see some teachers and some faces in their classrooms that they can identify with. I share that goal and I'm working with everyone towards it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll speak a little bit more about my experience about diversity and uh, what we will be bringing to the city and uh, something that the, the mayor left out, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's looking at, uh, again, uh, inclusiveness. Uh, we need more uh, uh, people that uh, not just look at color, but look at the competency of the issues that we face in, in, in our school systems, whether it be guidance counselors, whether it be the custodians as well. We need to make sure that we diversify on all levels and we provide people, again, in administrative roles that are providing these solutions. Uh, what I want to look at is something that the mayor has talked about, is uh, providing uh, incentives for people to uh, learn about uh, cultural competency as well and customer service, something that we need in the school system, and looking at uh, the issues that our children face as well, and again, providing the pathways from uh, education to careers. It's not just educating those that are out there in the, in the workforce that want to transition to different fields, but those that are growing up as well, and that's what it is about inclusiveness, age, uh, all different age ranges as well. I really need my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Carpenter, where are we as a city in terms of immigration and what is the assistance of immigrants? And the assistance of immigrants. Should I reword that? Yeah, I, I just told Mr. Carpenter, where are we as a city in terms of immigration and the assistance of immigrants? Gotcha. Brockton has always been a city of immigrants. It's been a city of immigrants for over 100 years. The only thing that's changed in the last 100 years is the country's people are coming from. So I'm very proud of our uh, history of uh, immigration here in the city. It's immigrants that built this city, built this country, and continue to do so. We are a welcoming city. Everyone is welcome here. I'm the first administration of this city who has welcomed everyone into city government, into city hall, into my office, into jobs, into appointments on city boards and commissions. So in terms of uh, immigration, if you think that where the question's going towards um, immigration policy, yes. we do not ask anyone in this city whether they're documented or not. I've been mayor for three and a half years. I've never asked anyone if they have documents or not. It's not my job. I'm concerned with guns, drugs, and gangs. If you're involved... Our federal immigration system is broken. It needs to be fixed down in Washington by the Congress and the President. It's not the mayor's job to fix the broken immigration system. It's the mayor's job to protect the people who live in the city 
And we have to have relationships. We have to build bridges, build bridges and have relationships of trust between city government and the various immigrant communities in our city. That's what's important to me. That's why in my three and a half years as mayor, we have never denied bail or held a person based upon their immigration status. We don't ask, it's not our job. If we were presented with a warrant, we would serve it and enforce it. But if you're not involved in guns, drugs, or gangs, you have nothing to worry about living in this city. If you are involved in guns, drugs, or gangs, then it's my job to remove you from this community using any and all means necessary. So something that a uh, Pereira administration uh, uh, that will be working on and something that a Pereira administration won't have to do is actually spend money on learning different languages, uh, c uh, city money, and uh, pay the city back after that. Uh, so because I learned multiple languages and I'm aware of cultural com competency, I know it's about inclusion and making sure that we're being proactive about that. It's not just looking at the policies and it's not just looking at those that are committing crime. It's about providing opportunities for those that want to grow up in the community as well. Uh, of course, we could imply law and order and we could look at the immigration policy, uh, but we need to look at the opportunities that we need for our youth in our diverse community. When I went to Adult Day Health Care Center uh, up on uh, North Main Street, I found a, a conglomerate of people from different cultures and different age ranges, mostly in the elderly community, uh, that wanted to be proactive, that wanted things to do. Uh, we need to look at aging in place and incentivizing not just our young community to work, but our elderly community that wants to uh, continue to be active in, in, the, in the workforce. Uh, it's, it's getting hard day by day looking at uh, healthcare bills as well and uh, looking at ways to uh, circumvent that uh, also. Uh, what we haven't seen in the city, again, is engaging the diverse community. So far, I've been seeing selective opportunities for those that uh, may uh, have uh, vacation uh, trips and things of the sort. My question to the mayor is, why, how, how, how come he hasn't gone to different communities like Haiti or the Latin community? Those are communities that are stricken as well and need our attention, and need our assistance, not just the Cape Verde Islands. I myself, as a Cape Verdean uh, descendant, find it offensive for you to uh, constantly pander to a Cape Verdean community. We need, to, we need to make sure that we engage all diverse communities in the city of Brockton, not just for votes, but for opportunity and hope as well. Uh, you mentioned about the diverse communities that you work with, but I haven't seen that. Uh, I propose a multicultural center where we would be able to learn about the different uh, communities. We'll be able to use different grants, CDC grants, CHDC, uh, Community uh, Development, uh, CDBG grants. Again, all the acronyms that I work with, uh, of course, as a regional planner, uh, we will make sure to uh, utilize our resources that will be that'll bring inclusiveness and uh, change Thank to our you. city. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Carpenter, one minute. What's interesting, Jimmy, you throw around the phrase cultural competency and then you criticize me for trying to learn the language and the culture of the largest single minority group in the city. It's not your turn to talk. Not your turn to talk. I, I give you your time. You should give me mine. Uh, we're very proud of our record. We are working. Listen. Jobs are important to all the communities in the city, including the hard-working immigrant cities and uh, communities in the city. We are creating jobs. We have cut the unemployment rate by more than half since I became mayor, over 9% to 4.5 today. Everyone, all the communities in the city, including our immigrant communities, want jobs, and that's what we're doing. We're creating jobs and we're creating opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for, for the, for the oh, is yes, that one minute? Yeah, oh, all right. Right. Thank you. Okay. Spread the love again. Right. Thank you. Ms. Pereira, yes. what is the status of the economic cooperation with some of the countries like Cape Verde, Haiti, and other countries from some of our newly emerged immigrants here in Brockton? Well, thank you for the opportunity for this question. And uh, as you said, yes, you work with the uh, single, uh, well, one of the uh, highest population in the community, Cape Verde community. But what about the other communities? Haiti was just stricken by a, not just a, a hurricane, but an earthquake as well. Uh, there's extreme poverty in the Latin community, but uh, and we have a strong community here. Uh, Puerto Rico community actually was just stricken by a, a hurricane as well, and we haven't seen that. What I like to do is, again, engage and provide opportunity for those that come to our community to work with those back home as well. 
well. Uh, that would not just strengthen the culture that's here, but those abroad as well. And looking at incentives for uh, our, our strong immigrant population here, uh, not just in uh, the um, Caribbean and the African community, but in the European community as well. There are issues going on in the European community. And uh, when we talk about cultural competency, it's not about just going uh, to different countries and uh, traveling and uh, exploring the place, but also uh, strengthening the culture that's here in our city of Brockton. Uh, being a proud American and a first generation immig immigrant, uh, I uh, went to Westwood State uh, University and it was a culture shock, but I stuck it through, I learned about my community, I learned about the neighbors that was there, and we came, became a stronger person. And that's why when learning geography, regional planning, I learned about making sure that we're inclusive and working with people from not just age, different age groups, but different uh, class, ba class backgrounds as well, whether it be low income, middle income, or upper income as well. And uh, bringing that experience to City Hall is what we need. We need a transparent government. We need an innovative gov government. And we need an inclusive government. And we haven't had that in the city of Brockton. We've seen it in the lawsuits. We've seen it in the crime rates. And we see it in the lack of opportunity in our school system. We need to make sure that we put someone there that's innovative and that's going to engage with not just the, those that are here, but those that are abroad as well. And being someone that's traveled to different places, such as Nice, France, Chicago, Illinois, Florida, Orlando, Florida, I'm a person that has not just gone to my background, Cape Verde community, which I've been there once, and I think you've been there, what, three, four times? I think it's time you spread the love to different places as well, sir. Thank you. I will my time. <clears throat> You're going to have to remind me what the original question was. What, what is the status of economic cooperation with some of the countries like Cape Verde, Haiti, and other countries from some of our newly emerged immigrants here in Brockton? Okay, so very recently we had both the President and Prime Minister at Cape Verde visit me here in Brockton at City Hall, and we engaged in some real meaningful dialogue around economic development, along with education and culture and other exchanges, but specifically economic development that can be beneficial on both sides of the ocean. We do have strong ties to Cape Verde. We do have a lot of families in both countries, and we need to take advantage of that. We are looking at creating markets for American companies and companies that can be Brockton-based companies in Cape Verde, such as technology around uh, energy and water. Cape Verde desperately needs our technology and our know-how in, in making their water system safe and reliable and also to, to grow their economy with electricity. At the same time, we're willing to help to continue to create markets for Cape Verdean products here in the U.S. That helps support businesses here also. And we have businesses in Brockton who import products like wine, like coffee, from Cape Verde and create markets here. So yes, there is more opportunity. We are working in that direction, but there are more opportunities to be seized, and not just with Cape Verde, but with all of our communities. Thank you. Mr. Carrera, one minute. Again, uh, being a proud Cape Verde American, I hear a lot of Cape Verde and not other uh, countries. Uh, again, uh, once again, you being a reactive mayor, we need a proactive mayor, one that's not gonna wait to work with different nations, one that sees the problems and goes after it. And that's what I do, and that's the reason why I ran for mayor, because I've seen a problem at City Hall and I pursued to change it. I didn't wait to go for school committee or council at large, I made sure I made the adamant change that we need in the City Hall government. And again, what I wanna do is look at the other countries and looking at what we have here in Brockton and strengthen the, the nation here in Brockton. Uh, the first uh, uh, teachers to be cut uh, at, at the, uh, the budget was uh, English second language teachers. Uh, that's not right. And that, as you know, as a strong uh, majority, minority majority community, we need to make sure that we educate our youth on uh, strengthening their English and make sure that we provide opportunities. Uh, we need a reading campaign. Uh, that's the most important thing that you do. When I read to my children at night, I make sure that I make sure that I articulate the words and pronounce it and make sure that they know the value of reading. Uh, that's something that you haven't done. And if you've done it, you've done it to a selective school. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Coppica, this next question is pretty long and it's very intense. So, Mr. Carpenter, there are many unhappy parents that are not satisfied with the special education process in the city. Parents feel they are not heard, they feel disrespected, and their children are not receiving the services they need to succeed. There is no special ed parent advisory council meeting on a regular basis, which is required, but has been inactive for some time now. 
Parents also feel they don't receive the best resources they need to help their children be successful. How do you feel we should address this very critical piece of our education system? Well, I think there's a lot in that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, I think the Brockton Public Schools have a great special education department. And respond to Mr. Purr about the ESL teachers. A Tuesday night school committee meeting, I advocated to recall another ELL teacher and three EL uh, paraprofessionals. So I recognize that need and we're pushing to uh, resolve them. With special education, I mean, this hits close to home with me. I, I have a, uh, a child also uh, that receives special education services. So yes, parents need to advocate for their kids. The school department needs to be responsive. There's a mechanism in place to do it, but the challenges are big. I'm not familiar with the Special Ed Advisory Council. I do know that there is a Special Ed PAC, um, but a lot of what you're asking is really <laughs> addressed to the superintendent of schools more so than the mayor, but the mayor does sit as the chair of the school committee and is allowed to have input, certainly, like any school committee member. We are committed to our special education students in every way possible. I advocate for special ed students all the time. The fact of the matter is in the state local aid to education right now, the legislature's own Chapter 70 Foundation Review Commission found that gateway cities like Brockton are not being reimbursed fairly for the cost of special education. We have a higher than the state average number of students with uh, uh, individual learning plans. So the challenges are there, but I do believe the Brockton schools are striving to provide the best special education services possible to every child growing up in this city. We have a lot of kids growing up with a lot of challenges and it's our responsibility as a city to help those students overcome those challenges. We're a city of opportunity, we're creating opportunity for every child growing up in this city and if that child has additional challenges, we are going to help them with those challenges to make sure that they succeed. Sir, as head of the school committee, I think you should know a little bit more about uh, special education and the need that we have. And to say that you advocate for uh, special education when I seldom see you do so uh, is a false statement and uh, should be followed through. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that we look at the innovative ways of working with children with special education, whether it be autism. I mean, if someone's com if, if there's a, a conglomerate of parents speaking about it and saying that there's an issue to it, then that must be true. There's a problem with the, pro with the system and we need to fix it. Uh, so again, with that said, it's looking at innovative, innovative ways to work with children with autism, look with the other uh, mental health issues as well. We have a diverse community that has a problem with mental health issues. As you may have recalled, uh, looking at the different organizations like Cuyoros Unidas, who went to a St. Edistine and talked about uh, mental health issues and suicide as well in the Cape Verdean community. It is also a prevalent issue in the Haitian community and Latin community as well, also with our veterans. So we need to make sure that we work with uh, and find other solutions that are inclusive to the people and are proactive as well. Uh, that's something that people have brought up to me as well while on my campaign. And it's something that I've seen in my own family as well. My nephew who goes to a, a, high, a, a local elementary school uh, has ADD, ADHD, and that was, that's a big problem in the school to prison pipeline. We need to make sure we have a mayor that is cognizant to all these issues, that is aware of these issues, and is going to provide, provide innovative solutions to these issues. And again, with the experience that I have working with the Department of Youth Services, being a motivational speaker, I know that it is a link to crime as well. I need to make sure that we look at the school to prison pipeline and the school system, which is something that administrators has not done. You cannot say that you've worked with at-risk youth. I've met with the Department of Youth Services. I've met with different institutions that are working every day on these solutions and on these problems, yet haven't seen any help come from the city of Brockton. Our youth coming from a low-income community, uh, again, instead of having an unemployment assistance, we need to look at plans that are going to be innovative, that are going to educate our people Thank you. and uplift them. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Perver. Right. Mr. Coffinson, one minute. Well, I thought the question was about special education in the Brockton Public Schools. Right. I'll try to respond to that part of it. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that a lot of the work the mayor does is not done in the public light. I have met with and advocated for dozens and dozens of special ed students and their families who have come to see me 
That work is not done out in public. It's done confidentially and privately to protect the rights of that student. So a lot, of the, a lot of the good work that you do as mayor is never seen out in public. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not happening. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people that would be happy to share their stories with you of my work advocating for their children with challenges in the Brockton Public Schools. I'm proud of that work. I'm there for those kids. I'm there for those families. Mr. Pereira. Easy one. How come he gets the easy one? <laughs> He's younger. <laughs> if elected, what will be your number one priority? <clears throat> My number one priority would be working for the people, not against the people. Working with the city council, not against the city council. Working for the city as whole. That's my first uh, obligation as mayor. And of course, yes, uh, a lot of the work that you're doing behind the scene, it's interesting to see that uh, your Facebook page has more likes than the city page. So my job would be to market the city, uh, not put it for sale, but make sure that we bring innovative businesses to the city. Not just solar panels, but look at water turbine in our Stanley Park Rivers, in our, in our uh, Sullivan uh, Park Rivers, uh, Salisbury Rivers, excuse me, and uh, the, the wind turbines on our, on our, on our businesses as well. Uh, looking at innovative practices is what I want to do for the city of Brockton. So uh, to answer your question, uh, again, the first thing that I would do is be a, a, a strong worker for us for our city government. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter, same question. If you are re-elected as mayor. Right. Um, <laughs> first of all, Jimmy, you can't govern on Facebook. <laughs> you do. <laughs> What we'll do is we'll continue to do the good work that we're doing right now. We will continue to take on the opioid epidemic more creatively than any other community. We will continue to fight for diversity in every aspect of city government. We will continue to be a city of opportunity. We will continue the economic revitalization of this city that's taking place right now today. Continue from day one, the number one issue of this administration has been fighting crime, making neighborhoods safe and stable. We're revitalizing parks and playgrounds, we're cleaning up the city, we're fighting crime. Crime is down, gun violence is down, almost every single category of crime is down because we're creating clean, safe neighborhoods for people to live in, and we'll continue that work, we'll continue to go forward. Thank you. Truth of the matter is, sir, I walk downtown Brockton, I bike downtown Brockton, I drive through downtown Brockton. It doesn't look beautiful, sir. The empty businesses, the homeless situation that we have there, ruining businesses, and the lack of solutions that you provided in City Hall. I haven't seen that. And I've seen the uh, obstruction that you've done with City Council. I've seen the obstructions that you've done with the uh, backdoor deals as well. And I've seen the lack of inclusion that you've done with City Hall as well. What we need, again, is an innovative mayor. We need someone that's going to be honest, transparent. The first thing you did once you were mayor was sue the city council. What we need to do is someone that's going to be collaborative, that's going to work with the city council, that's not going to sit on money and wait to relieve these monies once it's election time. We need someone that's going to make sure that's there every year. If you treat every year like an election year, we would be innovative. But we're not there yet. Again, we're ranked third highest crime city in the, in the Commonwealth and 71st in the nation. Numbers don't lie. Again, we have a 45.8 million dollar lawsuit with a 38 class action lawsuit that's going against the city of Brockton. You could have worked Time. with Mr. Lopes, but you didn't. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. I will. Okay. That's actually all the questions we have, but we have one more question for each gentleman. Mr. Pereira, why should the city of Brockton elect you as their next mayor? You have three minutes. Thank you. I'll give you a few reasons why the city of Brockton should elect me as uh, the next mayor. Because I am yours. I am the product of the city of Brockton. I didn't just go out to college, work for the city of Springfield with a population of 153,000 plus, had a successful opportunity to continue my work there, turn it down to come back to the city of Brockton. Doors were shut on me, I made sure to force it open. 
Now you have the opportunity on November 7th to help me push through. A great man by the name of Robert Marley said, you can fool some people sometime, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And on November 7th, you have the time, the opportunity to make change. I'm a person that has been through poverty. I'm a person that has received my education. I'm a person that has also been through the ups and downs that a lot of our youth have gone through the city of Brockton. I am 26 years old. I own a home in the city of Brockton. I'm a father to two beautiful children. I'm a fiance to a beautiful wife by the name of Julia Barbosa. I'm dedicated to the city. I will stay here. I was born here. I was raised here. I live here. And I know that I will be buried here as well. And I hope on November 7th that you will get out there. You will get a mayor that's committed to the change of the city. We don't need no more of the backdoor deals. We don't need no more of the money that is being paid back, the $8,000 uh, uh, of flowers or the uh, $9,000 of misgranted or the uh, lack of uh, innovative solution that we need. We should have had the uh, GIC, the Group Insurance Commission uh, for the city of Girl, where we would have saved $8 million. But the mayor is too afraid and timid to make sure to make the right decision that's going to change our city. We should have got out of the desalination plan or looked at other alternative options, but we failed to do so because we do not have the innovative mayor. We are worried, the taxpayers are worried, and they have shown so on the data of the preliminary. We had more collectively, more votes than the mayor did, and again, numbers don't lie. We had all of the people come out, and we will show that again November 7th. We need to make sure that we are proactive, and it's a time for change. The change we need, the voice we deserve. Now it's time to make sure that you do so. It is your job to make sure you go out there and vote. Make sure that you do so November 7th. Thank you for your opportunity. Thank you. First of all, Jimmy keeps throwing around the Lopes lawsuit. Let's set the record straight on that. The events covered in the Lopes lawsuit took place in 2010 and 2011. And the Let's say what the numbers really were. In 2000, the Lopes case was specifically about the DPW, hiring in the DPW. In 2011, there were 117 employees in the DPW. 110 of them were white. There were only seven minority employees out of 117. That's what was taking place under a prior administration when the events in the Lopes lawsuit were brought forward regarding. I'll talk about what we've been doing since we've been there. Since one of the first things I did in response uh, to the situation of the DPW, in my first six months as mayor, I replaced the DPW commissioner, because that's the person who's making the highest party job. And since the day that his replacement was appointed in December of 2014, 54% of the people hired to the DPW are minorities. That's our track record. So don't that's not my suit. That was someone else's. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Listen, guys, I'm not running against Jimmy. Our administration is running on its record of achievement for three and a half years. We are fighting the opioid epidemic. We are turning the city's economy around. Current and planned investment in the downtown of this city under my administration, $97 million. Whoever thought we'd get almost $100 million invested in downtown Boston? That's the downtown Boston we're building, Jimmy. Thank you. I am asking the people, we still have much work to do, much work to do. I would like the opportunity to continue to do that work for you, and that's why I ask you for your vote to continue to serve as your mayor on November 7th. One more time. Yes, sir. Yes. Leave this place. Thank you, <laughs> Lord, with your presence tonight as we depart from this place. May our safe arrival to our various destinations. May we remember the conversation of this gathering. May they illuminate and bring forth fruit in our undertakings. Until we meet again in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen.